there. I am taking a nice little stroll outside on this wonderful morning. Welcome back from the break, guys. I'm Susan Droge, and it is now time for the conversation segment. And you might wonder, why am I outside when I should be indoors by my laptop having a conversation with somebody? Well, the truth is, I'm avoiding doing homework with my siblings. It's not fun, guys. It's not fun. That actually brings me to the guests that we're going to be having today. We are going to be talking about e-learning, all this online learning, homework, math, nini, 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 what parents are going through, and how to cope. Let's go meet them. Hi, I'm Susan Jiroge, and I'm super excited, as you can tell, for today's little chat. I am going to be talking to somebody about education, because the game of education with our children has completely changed with the pandemic. So I'm super excited to introduce John Wills Jiroge. He is a regional team lead of an online learning platform called Tuasoma, and he's gonna be here to talk to us about e-learning, all the pros, if there are any cons, is it our friend, is it our foe, and so much more. Hi, John, how are you? I'm good, I'm good, how about you? I am so good. Welcome Great. to ATN Life and Style Virtual Edition. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having, um, taking time to talk to us. So first, I just have to ask, how have you been? How are things at home for you and working from home? <laughs> it is very hard because uh, for some of us um, as ext extroverts, uh -huh. uh, staying in one place, it's, it is hard. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we also trying to create a party, uh, one month party uh, as, as you entertain your family. So it has been an interesting season, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Do you have children of your own? Uh, getting there, but I have many sons. <laughs> yeah. You have many, many sons, yes, and you're going to be telling yes. me more about it. So <laughs> sure. You have mentored quite a few boys, and that's how Trasoma ended up coming along. Mm -hmm. um, how is the mentorship going with children? Because obviously now they're not in the schools where you would go and find them. It, it, has, been, uh, it has been a hard uh, transition, but a good one at the same time, okay. uh, because we had just uh, launched our annual um, program for the boys. And so we were halfway when um, this transition happened and that is uh, a COVID-19 pandemic. Um, the government's uh, direction to close institutions. And so what happened is we had to let boys go back, go back home. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but our commissioning was uh, whatever we had started, they continue studying. Okay. So the, ch yeah, so the challenge has been uh, not being able to, uh, to reach some of them uh, because some of the schools that we engage, we have boys from all the 47 counties and some of them cannot access uh, online learning. Yeah. But we also have some that we are mentoring through to Asoba. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Um, I like that you've touched on not being able to reach them just simply because of the feasibility, electricity and data is unfortunately mm -hmm. not accessible everywhere. Um, and that actually leads me to my next question. In those mm -hmm. areas or in those situations, where somebody can't get access to electricity, doesn't have access to data, so they can't learn online. Mm -hmm. What other options are there for parents? What, what, sh what are the things that somebody can do at home with their child to make sure that they feel their child is getting the best education? Um, I, I, am a, I am a very strong um, uh, advocate of uh, <laughs> uh, child and youth protection, and especially in, in terms of education yeah. uh, and, and right to quality education. Uh, and one of the things I have realized is that uh, there's a lot to learn uh, more than what children get in, in, a, in a learning institution. And what I would uh, say is that there are parents who are engaging in conversations with their children, uh, not necessarily to cover the syllabus, but just learning things about life. And I think one of the things that we have uh, realized and we come to accept uh, is that um, is there are those who are not able to access online learning. And as a result of that, uh, for us, we have encouraged the parents who, who are able to use Trasoma uh, to access and uh, reach out to their communities uh, in, the, in the process. So like now creating parents groups and mentoring their children uh, through, through Trasoma, yeah. 
Okay, that's good. Um, I like what you said about other things outside of the school education as well. It's something that parents can really do and mm -hmm. we're gonna get more into that. But um, when you talk about the Trasoma platform and like with parent mm -hmm. groups, yeah, how does the Trasoma online plan platform work for somebody that wants to get on there, that's somebody, that somebody who mm -hmm. has maybe children in school, mm -hmm. both for primary and high school, how extensive is the syllabus and how much does it cover the learning for a child in school? Okay, one, uh, the model of our deployment uh, from our mentorship to, to, to Asoma is, uh, is not retention, uh, but um, deploying people. And okay. so what, what we have done is uh, the, the platform accommodates uh, uh, primary school, high school, uh, and even universities. Okay, great. And organizations can also use the, the platform. Okay. And yeah, so because uh, we are more into engaging uh, communities. And one of the interesting things I have found is that um, Kenyans are, a, they are interesting people and generous people. Uh, because uh, in, in Marsabit, um, there's one gentleman who actually bought some uh, tablets for children and uh, they are not able to, they were not able to access tablets and all that, uh, but he's using Trasoma to educate these children. Um, and, and so it is an interesting, uh, it is dynamic uh, and mm -hmm. at the same time, <laughs> and at the same time, I just feel overwhelmed that there are people who are thinking of what they can do through the platform. And so, so far we are at uh, 21,000 uh, subscribers. And what we did when COVID happened, uh, we opened it up to uh, learning institutions mm -hmm. so that they can use it for free, yeah. Oh, that is amazing. And yes, for free people, you heard that correctly. I don't know why <laughs> Sir John Jiroge, who he has the same name as my father, actually. <laughs> Jiroge is a great people. <laughs> yeah, Jiroge is a great people. <laughs> um, it is for free. So other learning institutions, other schools, or I mean, other universities, or like a training institute or polytechnic can actually go on Trasoma and sign up and their students can then have access to learning. Yeah, actually, how to summer works, um, a, a school opens a portal. And uh, through that portal, they can create as many accounts um, as their population. Uh -huh. And what happens, uh, we have opened it up for free for primary school and high school. Uh, and there is an allowance of uh, this school also creating parents' accounts. So the parent is able to know what is happening in school. And through to um Teachers can create their timetables and students can have uh, conversations. And one of the security measures that we put is um, ensuring that each student has uh, their own account uh, to, to log in, mm -hmm. as well as uh, the parents, they have their own account. And schools have, been, have also been organizing um, parents meetings uh, uh, through, through to a summer. Right. And one of the most encouraging thing is um, how parents are actually uh, working out uh, some of these challenges that they are going through, not necessarily guided by, uh, by the exams, but guided by desire to create a community. Yeah. That is amazing. That's so good to hear. Kudos to you and Thank to you. all the schools that, and teachers that are really making an effort to make sure children's learning still continues. Mm -hmm. um, so, with schools being closed, of course, with this pandemic, the biggest stressor for parents who don't have access to online learning is the lag. They, we do not know how long children will be at home for. Nobody can see mm -hmm. right now. So mm -hmm. as far as we know, there's a gap um, in education. Now, you have a program where you mentor boys. What do you usually yeah. see in boys when there's a lag in their education or there's a big gap? in some years of education? Um, one of the things I, <laughs> I advocate and I tell students is that um, the only one you're competing against is yourself. And that is knowing who you are as a person and defending uh, as well as um, manifesting your identity as an individual. Right. So I am not a proponent of uh, the competition that we have in uh, our learning institutions. Mm -hmm. uh, 
because I, I desire to see young people who acquire knowledge and use that knowledge uh, to, uh, to help their communities and also their families. And so when we are mentoring boys, uh, like now there are some boys, uh, I give some work uh, and they, they didn't finish. And, and so I have to come back and ask. Wall. <laughs> the boys, you know, be a hater. <laughs> so yes, so, yeah, so, so the, the, uh, our conversation revolved around um, what made you not finish. Right. And, and so they have to think uh, hard about it. And so our mentorship program is mainly to help develop um, uh, those capacities mm -hmm. and uh, critical thinking as well as self-leadership. Because uh, once we can, we get to a place where we can lead ourselves, then uh, the, mo the most important thing is that um, communities will be transformed and there will be an aspect of care and complementing each other instead of competing. Oh my gosh, I love that. There will be an aspect of care where we'll complement yeah. each other and not compete with each other. Man, that's powerful. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Dungu. Come here to drop Thank a gem. You. I hope all the parents and students <laughs> are listening. Um, now, for the parent side, there are parents yes. who um, are still catching up with this new concept of homeschooling. It's quite difficult. It's new. You know, people are actually trained to be teachers. So for a lot of parents mm -hmm. who are teachers, it's a very new experience. What advice mm -hmm. do you have for parents who are trying to get their children used to to online learning? What are tips, things that they can do in the house? Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I think first is to encourage the parents um, not to panic uh, because there are parents who think that their children are, yes, <laughs> because there are parents who think that their children are left behind. Uh, and my question, because I've had parents meetings uh, on Tosoma, the question I ask parents is left behind by who? <laughs> And, and, the, and globally, as in, it's like globally we have a, we have a lockdown. <laughs> uh, True. So, yeah, so unless they're being left behind because guys are going to the moon, mass, uh, I, I don't think there is any child who is being left behind. I think what we need to concern ourselves um, about currently is what are some of the skills that our children can acquire that will help them move forward after COVID? Because post-COVID, um, we will have the behavior change. Mm -hmm. um, a, thought processes will change. Yeah. Uh, mot yeah motivations um, as to why people do things, that is changing. True. And emotionally, there is also turmoil and turbulence in, in, um, in people's lives. And, and so instead of thinking that my child is being left behind, I think one of the things... Um, the four things that a parent should do is ensure that uh, they empower their children so that they, they, they develop behaviors that will, um, that will assist them in life. Mm -hmm. Then be in touch with their children's emotions uh, and engaging their children's uh, mind. Because uh, the reason why I don't like exams, it's because I don't know how to read for an exam without cramming. <laughs> Actually, can you please tell everyone on here how much we need it? <laughs> Same. <laughs> so uh, I, I think I, I just like learning and empowering people to think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that is, that is the most important thing. And like now the conversations we are having with, um, with children and youth, uh, is, is, is around vision and the power of vision uh, mm -hmm. and helping them articulate their vision, mm. coming, coming up with statements that define what's, um, what they see uh -huh. that has not been seen by other people and now creating a path for them to actualize um, what they desire to see in this world. Yeah. Wow. I really like that. That's amazing. I hope Thank you. Our children are listening. Um, and shout out to Tosoma again um, Thank you. for doing all of that. Empowering children to think that is not something that is very easy to do. But <laughs> I like your yeah. tips, to parents. I think if you try and empower somebody and you try to keep in touch and you try to keep the lessons, not math, science, English, and things, which are very important.
that's mm-hmm. something that I think is sustainable and should go across the board anyway. Um, sure. Now, I want to ask the same for students because now students mm-hmm. are in a completely different playing field. You used to leave your house, mm-hmm. you go to school, there's a whole school schedule, you interact with teachers and students while there. Now, it's completely different. My mom is my teacher, or my dad is my teacher, or my sister. So how, what advice do you have for girls and boys who are being taught by people who are also lost? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, think, uh, I think this whole process has, has uh, brought us to a place of appreciating what teachers do mm-hmm. and uh, appreciating that uh, there is a skill called teaching. Uh, and and I have seen parents uh, struggle, and there's this clip where a child was telling the mom, uh, this is not school, this is our house. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so I, I think it has brought us to a place where we, we need to acknowledge and appreciate that teachers do a great job. Mm-hmm. And there are those who are trained as educationists. But now for the, for the students, uh, one of the things I find uh, challenging, and that's why we, uh, we empower children to create their own processes uh, and exposing them to some of the tools that will help them plan, think, engage their minds, and also create communities among themselves, mm-hmm. uh, is simply um, realizing that in our system of education, you go to school, someone has planned for you how the day will be. Yeah. So you enter in the morning, leave by four, go back home, finish your homework, go back to school. True. And, and you find that uh, after class eight or even form four, mm-hmm. some of those transitions are not easy for the children. Right. And so r- right now, children have a lot of time. Uh, but... I think one one of the lessons that we need to train children is how to manage time as a resource Mm. and not equating time to money, but viewing time and appreciating time as a more precious um, thing in life. Yeah, you're never getting it back. Yes, yeah, yeah. Because time is not like currency. Currency, uh, inflation and all those things, then you can revive it, you can get a different uh, denomination and all that, but time Mm -hmm. is so precious. So I think right now we should should work more on training children on how to manage their time. Wow. You know, you guys, you're seeing me taking notes. I have young siblings. I'm listening to Sir John Chavogi here and I'm like, I, there's some things I need to talk to my siblings about that maybe I've been missing. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, I want you to touch specifically on the boy child because mm-hmm. there's always a conversation about the girl child when it comes to education. And because you've mm-hmm. been working with boys, I'd really be interested to know, um, with boys learning on the same platform as girls, but everyone is going through e-learning, Mm-hmm. As you, have you seen a difference in how the genders are dealing with isolation and having to learn from home? I'm also trying to ask <laughs> if the culture is doing better. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, well, it, it is very interesting. And um, uh, every child is unique. And, uh, and for boys, um, we have uh, Bravehearts uh, mentorship program nice. um, a, through online. And, and some, of the, uh, some of the things I'm hearing is there are children who, who are really interested in techy stuff. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so we had a boy log in and uh, he, he asked, uh, can you give me a presentation? And I asked, what do you mean? Can I be the presenter today? I said, it's okay. And uh, <laughs> I allowed him to do that. And he was really excited. Oh, wow. Uh, Yes, then there's another educator who is using Trosoma because we have a section for educators. I'm um, sorry, could you explain what does it mean for the boy to ask to be a presenter? What does it mean? He was the teacher for the It, it means, yeah, it means uh, as, a, as a trainer or as a teacher, uh, there's some, uh, what are they? <laughs> there, there's some responsibilities that I have okay. and accessibility through Trosoma. Right. That I can, uh, I can actually allow the student to do 
to, to do their presentation. Because to someone has a whiteboard. So I can give the child that right to write on the whiteboard and do his presentation. Yeah, so. A higher willingness to perform. Like people are actually volunteering for things maybe you wouldn't even expect them to ask. You. Yes, and you see, when you're training a child, uh, you should not always show this child that you're the, be that you're, you're the best in everything. Right. Uh, affirming them is allowing them to also train you. Wow. Okay. So you shouldn't actually like be like me doing a joke in a kid. Ah, no, 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 no. All parents say they were number one. <laughs> with that one we'll talk about it said, how all parents say they were number one. Statistically, not possible parents. Ask me about my dad. <laughs> <laughs> that is so amazing. Um, anything yeah. else that you've seen differently on the students and when it comes to them being on a learning pl platform when they have more responsibility? Um, I, I, I think uh, I like what, um, uh, what, what girls are doing. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, and I would say that um, I am an advocate of empowering girl child. And I don't think uh, girls are, uh, they are over empowered. I don't think there is anything like that. Thank you. Actually, we Can need ladies. Again? <laughs> <laughs> we, need, we need ladies who are empowered. And we also need boys who are empowered so that they can complement each other. Very, very and so yeah, the conversation around the boy child should not be the boys uh, left behind and all that. And, and we have girls who are doing very well in Turkey as well as uh, boys who are doing very well in Turkey. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So good to hear. Thank um, you. Fantastic. Um, shout yeah. out to all the children who are actually really trying their level best and are adapting to this new culture the best way that they know how. Um, when it comes to e-learning and online learning, it's a totally new world for and for children. Uh, how have you seen the adaptation on the Twasoma side? Do you have more and more and more people signing up now or has it kind of, maybe this is also a curve, has it leveled up? <laughs> I think uh, we started with, um, <laughs> we started with one school. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, now we are at uh, 21,000 uh, people using Twasoma. Oh, wow. And, uh, not just in Kenya. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it is amazing because what we did was we asked ourselves, what can we do mm -hmm. to empower our communities? And so we decided to offer it for free. And by offering it for free, mm -hmm. uh, there is consistency because when you're using Trasoma, you have an allowance of three hours. Okay. Um, to, uh, uh, and even teachers can time their lessons uh -huh. uh, and they just manage their own time. And we are not the ones managing um, the platform for them. Right. You actually manage your own account. And so with that, it has helped us um, build numbers. Uh, and at the same time, we don't offer content. So uh, different institutions offer their own, uh, uh, their own syllabus. Uh, and so we have 844, we have uh, IGCSE. Uh, we have all these, uh, these institutions using the platform uh, and organizations as well training uh, different communities. Mm -hmm. And so we, with that, uh, we have seen uh, an increase uh, in, uh, in numbers. And uh, as, as in there is joy to see that um, uh, people are adapting, and those in uh, in the village, uh, like uh, this case in Marsa Beach. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that for me that was uh, one of the most successful uh, experiences uh, that we have had so far. That is amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much, John Will Zorga. You have been an incredible guest here at Kate and Now, unfortunately, time is up for us, but before we finish, I would like you to give one last encouraging word to parents and to students. So encouraging word for them as they navigate this world of online learning. Okay. Um, I would say that uh, we are not racing against uh, anyone and uh, children are not left behind. And the, the most important gift uh, parents can give their children is ability to think, uh, ability to question, and ability to answer. 
and also be responsible in a society. And at the same time, uh, also encouraging parents because they are those who have lost their jobs uh, and there are others uh, who don't have enough that uh, it, it will be well, it shall be well. And um, let us support each other. And the most important tool we have right now is love. And uh, finally, I would say that um, let us uh, intentionally uh, purpose to care because uh, when we care, we provide an atmosphere where people prosper. Yeah. And the only way to care is looking beneath a situation and we will be able to judge correctly. That is amazing. I completely agree. I don't think I have anything else to add. Would you like to share um, where people can find the Trasoma platform and if you are on any social media platforms where they can find you on there as well? Um, yeah, I, um, for Tuasoma, uh, it is Tuasoma.com, uh, Tuasoma.com, uh, and uh, it is web-based, so you don't have to download anything. Uh, and uh, you can uh, also, we are on Twitter and for John Wilson Joroge uh, on, uh, on Facebook. Well, thank you so much, John. I'm very Thank you. to tell my dad that I was just talking to his namesake. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I will get a book for him. <laughs> Please! Oh my gosh! Yes, I'll, yes, I'll, yes. I'll send you, I'll send you, I'll send you the address. <laughs> okay, sure. Thank you so, so much, John. It's been a massive, massive pleasure. Please continue staying safe. Bye-bye. Thank you. you Bye-bye. And that was Mr. John Wills Jaroge, regional lead at Fasoma Online Learning. First of all, I just heard him mention at the end that it was that it is web-based. That is amazing. So you don't even require extra space anywhere. You don't have to download anything and be confused. Go onto the website and hopefully all will be well from there. You can find them on their platforms if you have any questions regarding Fasoma. This is Conversations. I like any with Suras Cut today from the amazing guests that I have on this show. And something that really hit home with me from Ms. Anjoge today was we need to care more. And when we do that, and when we care with our children, we will create complementary environment, not a competitive one. And in that way, we'll make sure no child is left behind. I am Susan Jiroke. You can follow me on my social media platform, Sura underscore comment on Instagram, S Jiroke underscore on Twitter, and keep using the hashtag KT and Life and Style for the rest of the show. Now let's go hang out, dance, and watch TikTok videos with Laura and Nixie.